Hey, sweethearts, it's Rowan, and I am going to go and do this video that I was talking about doing. Uh, this would be uh, my review of the High Nama. This is from the Raytheon Mythos series uh, by Storm Constantine and others. So, a uh, quick breakdown. Uh, this is uh, this would be uh, Storm's first relatively standalone uh, novella of uh, Rethu, and I say relatively because it's uh, the first in something that she's referred to on social medias as the Alba Sul cycle, uh, which is uh, so far uh, three loosely connected um, novels. Um, in the world of Raythu. And the second thing I want to get down real quick is uh, the Raythu Mythos would be another uh, par portion of uh, the world of Raythu, uh, unlike uh, the Raythu Chronicles, um, which would be titled, as I said uh, in other videos, I've uh, I've read the, uh, the Omnibus, so the Raythu Chronicles um, includes uh, the Enchantments of Flesh and Spirit, the Bewitchments of Love and Hate, and the Fulfillments of Fate and Desire. Uh, those were published um, 87, 88, and 89, respectively. Um, originally, of course, they have since been revised and reissued twice. Uh, the Raythu Histories, which includes, and I just finished these, uh, The Wraiths of Will and Pleasure, The Shades of Time and Memory, and The Ghosts of Blood and Innocence. Uh, the Raythu Mythos would probably be best described as a community endeavor in the writing of uh, mythology, uh, legends, and uh, continued histories of the world of Raythu. So, uh, Raythu Mythos is a community effort. Uh, the first um, novel published in the, you know, in the Mythos, um, series would have been Breeding Discontent, which was the last one that I reviewed. The Mythos does not simply include, uh, novels and novellas. This is definitely a novella. Uh, but also, um, anthologies of short stories of, um, I want to say about, um, I think the smallest one has only eight stories. Um, each by different authors. So, um, so the Hainama is very short, about 185 pages, and it's divided into three chapters. Other than the fact that Storm seems very fond of, uh, using the number three, um, in a lot of, you know, she's really into the various symbolism surrounded by three. I... Um, I found it difficult to discern why this is specifically broken up into three parts. And before I get any further uh, in my little notes that I took, uh, if you have no idea what everything I said before the, uh, the page number and chapter breakdown was at all about, please go, um, I will link in the description box my, my playlist of uh, reviews of the various Raythu novels, and you can watch the reviews and judge for yourself whether or not you want to read them, or if you just want to watch me, uh, do reviews of <laughs> them. Um, either way, I think you're missing, you know, I, I think you're missing out if you don't read them. I make so many tiny little, there's so much of my handwriting that I can't read at a distance. Like the Chronicles, uh, this one is told in a first-person, uh, perspective narrative. Um, but, you know, from a completely new character, and, uh, with, you know, I can't even recall right now if any of the characters in earlier books are even mentioned in this one, uh, so if they are, it was only in passing and is of no consequence to the story. Unlike the one I'm reading now, where, I will get to that book when I get to it. <laughs> uh, so this follows uh, Jasana. He's the primary character in this, uh, and it is told from his perspective. And he was um, incepted Raythu, meaning, of course, he was not 
born into the race, but he was uh, transformed via blood magics um, by, you know, the, uh, the local tribe. Uh, and he is native to the island of Albasul, which is uh, basically England. <laughs> uh, he tells us that he's been sent to the Sul town of Jesseth for further training uh, in their magical caste system, which is broken up into uh, three levels, each of which contain three levels. He's uh, been sent by his, uh, by, by the, um, by the people of the town he's originally from to the, uh, you know, to Jesseth for further magical cast training uh, by their uh, renowned Hainama Isobi. Um, and without expecting to, um, Jas and Isobi uh, fall in love and officialize a chestnut relationship um, yeah, if you haven't been uh, reading the books, uh, Chesna is approximately equivalent to Rethu marriage, though um, it is it is given a different spiritual significance. And Isobi seemingly very quickly is able to talk Jess into creating you know, uh, Harling together, so basically giving birth, and then, uh, right at the round of time, uh, Isobi gains a fairly difficult student who comes to, uh, monopolize, uh, the Hainama's time, even to the detriment of not only his other students, but also his family. Because the town is relatively small with a tight knit community, uh, this the uh, the strife in this relationship does um, affect other Raithu in the town. Um, and Jess learns, I want to say, toward the end of chapter two, that Isobi does have a history of sabotaging his relationships. Uh, whether this is intentional or not. It's not exactly clear, but he, he has reached a point where he does want to repair the relationship and, um, and see it become better. Unlike a lot of the other Raythu stories that I've read, um, especially from Storm, um, I really did not see the ending coming, so I am <laughs> I I'm not going to include any spoilers even though, you know, I I round out the ending for most of these before, but it's it was very satisfying. It was. It was quite satisfying. Uh like I said, I didn't really see it coming like I have with others. In fact, I thought at some point, literally the opposite was going to happen. Um, but, you know, the way it worked out, it made complete sense. So it flowed very naturally. Uh, it just, like I said, I didn't really see it coming. So, you know, if, if you've read this or, you know, end up reading this because uh, of this review, then please let me know, like, whether or not you were able to predict the ending. Uh, so I really did enjoy Jasna's voice. Uh, in this, unlike a couple of her other characters that we've uh, that that she's written from their perspective, uh, he has a very conversational tone, and you know has this very lovely personality that comes out in the in in the words. Like um, he's occasionally sarcastic, but you know quite charmingly so, and. You know, he does paint a vivid and engaging picture of the town and his friends, neighbors, and family. And I really did connect with him and his relationship with Isobi. Uh, the impression he gives the reader of Isobi, especially of the relationship with him, it really does uh, remind me on some ways 
of the most recent relationship that I had, which was just a catastrophe. Uh, so <laughs> Uh, but because, you know, mine ended in such a catastrophe, clearly there are some differences, but, uh, I was able to, you know, tap into that relatability, and, um, especially when you get to be about my age, which, uh, I do believe is around the age storm was when, when she wrote this, uh, you'd probably find some relatability to him as well. Uh, so, yes, uh... Storm's uh, characteristically lush prose is woven throughout, but like I said, you know, she does give just his own personality that does stand out from other characters she's written first-person perspective from. So would I recommend this one for uh, fans of the other Raythu books? Absolutely. Um, so can it stand alone? or be an adequate introductory novella to, uh, of Raythu to the reader. And I would say probably. Um, so I'm obviously so far Im immersed and engaged in this, uh, in, in this series at this point that it's really hard for me to tell. Ah, uh, so, like I said, when, when asked if this would stand alone, I can only say probably. Uh, there is, um, important, uh, information about, uh, Raythu, uh, physiology and history that is, um, brought up. But again, it is done so in a way that is inobtrusive to, um... Mm. to continuing readers like myself, uh, but it should uh, shed just enough light on uh, what is going on in this world to people where this is somehow their first book, if only because it's short. <laughs> I, I could understand why, um, why this might look far less intimidating than an 800-page omnibus of the first... Uh, three novels, which would be the Chronicles series. So, like, the only issue I really have um, is at this point uh, in reading, it does sort of feel like Chronicles uh, was a little bit less developed when it was first written, and so I very much am now interested in going back and reading the revised editions, uh, or at least the first revision that I have in Omnibus. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, like, you know, at this point in reading the series, it does kind of make the world, um, as portrayed in the first trilogy, uh, a, <laughs> it, it does end up seeming a little less developed, uh, so I can understand why she would want to go back and revise it, especially since, um, she's, uh, very eagerly engaged the fan community included um, a lot of you know their own works into the uh, into the um, you know the the world building uh, so um, yeah like I said it's it's a really short one it's a really short one I probably should have finished this a week sooner than I did but I kept cleaning out my shopping bag. <laughs> I kept cleaning out my shopping bag while I was reading this and forgetting to put it back inside my bag. And at some point, you know, I just realized, no shit, I should have finished this book ages ago. So, um, so yeah, a uh, short book, short review video. So, all right, sweethearts, uh, the next one that I will be reviewing for the internet is... Uh, please, bookmark, don't fall out, would be, um, Tears of Sun by, uh, Victoria Copus. This is another part of the, uh, Mythos, um, series, and, oh god, I, like, this, this so far, it's this, this use of papyrus and very, very, very 
amateurish looking um, Photoshop layering. I'm not a fan of this up here, but, um, you know, as they say, try not to judge a book by its cover. Um, you can judge whether or not you're interested by the back cover bur blurb, but, um, but yeah, uh, on the good side, uh, as the, uh, as, as the, as the, as the series progressed, the cover art got better, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um yeah, so I will uh I I will you will see me in my next video. I'll see you when you start leaving comments at me and all of the people who are still debating my gender even though I do make it clear in another video, you know, start hurling all sorts of abuse at me. And uh if you would like to continue hurling abuse at me and uh, and screaming obscenities in the comments, uh, please feel free to, uh, like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Um, I've also got a Spooky House Discord server, and I don't know, I, I was really bored one day. <laughs> and, uh, plus when I'm recording music, I do call it Spooky House Studios, and I do do other things aside from music, obviously. Um, including painting and shit, so I'm mean, like, why the hell not? And, um, and so, uh, so, yeah, I've got a Discord, and I've got Patreon, and I've got a couple people donating there. I've got, I don't know, that, that $8 a month, <laughs> that $8 a month from Patreon after, uh, <laughs> you know, after my own donations to, uh, Dame Darcy and Unwoman, go through, and then there's their fees, it's like, that eight dollars has been, you know, that's, that eight dollars is the reason that after the rest of my bills go through, I have eleven dollars in my account rather than three. <laughs> oh, precious eight dollars. So, uh, so yeah, if you would like to, um, subscribe via Patreon and, and shit, and I don't know, I haven't done a whole lot in the way of um, putting up exclusives, but you will basically get, um, all of my music, uh, without having to go and buy it separately on Bandcamp, which you can also do with the link in the description box. And that's all I've got to say right now, other than, um, bats and kisses and take care of yourselves, sweethearts. And I love you all so very much, and goodbye.